calls for reparations as Tulsa anniversary is looming. So they're showing a lot of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they've been talking about it. I think they also have on, I don't know if it's Good Morning America, uh, Gail King is doing a segment on Oklahoma, the Oklahoma, the historical uh, Oklahoma massacre. And so there's going to be a lot of articles that are pointing around to that. And so this is real short. So <clears throat> I wanted to say before I started off and even after um, this is over with, um, in regard to this situation here, some people have not really um, knew that this took place. So the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma is now, they're gearing up this week to mark the 100th anniversary of the 1921 massacre when a white mob they killed and burned its way through the city greenwood district is what it was called which was at the time one of the largest and wealthiest black communities in the united states so tulsa's native duke durant booker t washington he walked here and he came here and he named it the Negro Wall Street is what it is, was called and is still called the Black Wall Street is what we call it. And so, right, it's like, man, this is like the Negro Wall Street. So that's the significance of it. This is the Mecca, or at least it, it was at the time. And... Probably people that live out there that are native to that area still consider it to be. So according to a Human Rights Watch report in May, around 300 people died in the massacre and more than 6,000 survivors were sent to internment camps. And so I don't think people really knew how, how the severity of this was. And they were, when they were sent to the internment camps, which is why many, including Reverend Robert Turner, are calling for reparations for this situation that happened there. So for nearly three years, the pastor of a historic Vernon African Methodist Episcopal Church has been leading weekly marches on the city hall. So there's a video attached to it. I'm not showing the videos, and I'm going to be real honest the reason why, if you show the videos, there's these copyright laws, and and then uh, somehow I think uh, YouTube they read the they read your um when you make a video they read your videos and they're trying to see if anything is 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 violent if anything is is uh, going against copyright uh, laws and 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 if if you uh, I guess if you display videos, certain videos, um, it depends. Well, it wasn't like that before, but now they're being real particular about things because they want to monitor the activity of people on these websites because you have had people that have abused the privileges of the websites, but then you've also had people from these uh, sites that run the sites that are real biased and I've heard YouTubers say that they feel that sometimes they're going too far with these uh, rules because they keep changing them and um, they're harder on other other people than they are other people and so I've witnessed that you know where it seems as though it's biased against certain groups speaking out uh, they try to censor the freedoms of speech and certain freedoms of speech that are really really violent seem to somehow uh, slip through the radar but when it has to do particularly with issues such as this um, it's it's scrutinized or it's uh, surveillanced heavily so um, this right here is yet but a, one of, of the many articles having to do with racial uh, violence that has taken place throughout history 
And so it has been a topic for up for discussion, even in the schools out there in the area and everywhere. Actually, this should be taught as a lesson about what had took place. It's historical and it's um, content is something that should also be uh, considered in uh, not only just the history books, but in classrooms when you're talking about the concentrations of um, and subject matter of what happened to people that were trying to build wealth in the African-American community in the U.S. Wealth building, if you want to talk about why we have wage gaps or anything having to do with uh, the, the financial divisions that become so highly racialized. And so I have nothing to do with the videos that are on the side of me here. I, they might be either related or unrelated or, or maybe semi-related to this article. So I didn't pull those up. So sometimes every now and then those things will pop up. But um, I try to erase them. <laughs> I think they have music to them. I don't know. But this article it basically is saying that they're leading marches. And so this bipartisan, going back to the article, is very, very much so moderate, really right of center. Commission said we need a reparations to the survivors. So B, in the absence of the survivors, reparations are payments given to the descendants. So if a person was alive back in that time and they're still alive, they would receive the reparations or they would be in line to receive it. The descendants, however, if that, those people aren't alive and they have grandkids or are, are that are adults or grand great grandkids or whoever is descended from those people who were survivors and they're native to that situation they would be the one next in line to to benefit from the reparations of what had happened back then and I'm sure the stories are passed are handed down generation to generation so in an absence it says of the survivors reparations or payments given to the descendants see scholarships and so this is what their um i guess they have it listed out a b and c different things that they were going to do so c would be scholarships for descendants to go to college for free and a number four is an economic incubator for the businesses of Greenwood, the historically black businesses to return. And the fifth one, a memorial to um, house the bodies that were dumped in mass graves, a memorial to enter those bodies. And so not a one of those recommendations has been done as of yet. And so we're in the year of 2021, and before you know it, we'll be in 2022. So this is what they're asking, which these don't seem like a lot to ask for, being it so is that this situation did occur. Okay. There's a child care career called Do And so, so, um, <laughs> sorry about that. So, it goes on to say, not one of those things has been done as of yet, and I add a sixth one. So there's six one, which is a criminal investigation into this massacre, which was a race massacre, and it was in 1921. And so the call for justice is now growing beyond Tulsa. Turner is also an advocate for the HR 40, a bill to fund the study of slavery. And that's what I was saying. This would be good as a lesson, like the study of slavery and discrimination in the colonies. 
and the U.S. from 1619 to the present. So that's the reason why they wanted to put the lesson of 1619 in the classrooms so you could learn about the things that happened. And this wasn't the only uh, this wasn't the only massacre that happened. There was Rosewood Massacre. There was this this 1921 Tulsa Massacre. There was also um, um, I believe, I don't know if it was called Bloody Summer or something like that, where there was another massacre that took place. There's so many of them that people are unaware of. Uh, so much history that is being hidden, hiding it doesn't make things go away as we, we witnessed in 2020 and uh, to now. We see that by hiding it, you're not facing the harsh realities of what has happened to so many people and what the descendants have the stories are still there they're not going away and there's been so many calls for reparations and so i just think hiding it is not a good idea and doing a lesson i actually believe doing a lesson doing lessons in school and making people aware of what has gone on opens the eyes of people and then it um it helps people to, to learn about other cultures in a way where it isn't uh visceral they they begin to see people for who they are and not view them as objects or uh, all these biased and stereotypical beliefs but then they start to realize okay this is why these protests are happening this is why people are homeless this is why people are treated one way at work and another group is treated another way it, it actually it, it makes for a better future because then people learn how to you know learn at least more people will see each other more humanly you're, that's the hope that you're that if you learn about other people you begin to uncover all these falsehoods that's the way i look at it but I don't know how anybody else sees it, maybe either, but I just feel like when you learn about other cultures, you begin to understand more about people and who they are, rather than judge them based on uh, 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 false stereotypes of who, who you think they may be because you haven't had enough exposure or you are unaware about the circumstances of what people have experienced so it has been floated in congress for more than 30 years about the reparations of this particular situation here but never taken up for a full vote and so i want to stop for a minute and say now i know this is not related but i kind of think it should be you notice how right now I don't know if you really pay close attention because some people say they don't watch the news, but it's everywhere. It's on your phones. It's on your watches. It's 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 everywhere. Even if you don't want to look at it, if they, they you come home, they're gonna push it at you, or you're gonna hear about it from a, a neighbor if something traumatic happens. Right now, people who haven't been vaccinated for coronavirus. They're offering all this money and all these incentives for people just to get shots against a virus. However, when black people want reparations for the, the incidences that have happened and have contributed to what is going on now when you see a lot of black people displaced, they're, they're not, uh, uh, there's a, a wage gap, wealth gap uh, in household incomes. There's also opportunities that aren't, aren't readily available or are not fairly available to communities of color. There's a whole lot of uh, history that up to now has affected the present. And that's why you see a lot of uh, protests, a lot of uh, unequalness and uh, inequality going on. And so when you see all of this, they're ready to put money and prizes and gifts towards 
people getting a shot so they can keep the economy flowing and do what they've always done and they haven't learned yet because they still don't pay teachers enough and they still don't pay certain essential workers enough and they're just now looking at Biden's looking at administration looking at ra raising uh, wages to 15 an hour but yet we still pe we have people that can't really live a, uh, knowing that you know if an emergency happens that they will be able to pay their rent or their mortgage you have all of this um, student loan debt all these things going on but yet they don't have money for reparations or, or they just want to look at it it's like they have not made a move on those issues which are long overdue and and it's crazy and I kind of feel like, I'll be honest, I feel like, you know, when more people of color were starting to get educated, uh, in the beginning, it wasn't as as large of a group because it was prohibited for, for some time for people to get education or our schools were so segregated. And then we moved out of that and integrated schools. And then you had all these hoops you had to jump through. Now there's more hoops. Now they created this these loans you got to get as soon as you get a bachelor's degree and then after that they want you to start you know if you go any further past a bachelor's you got to get take out a loan to get your master's in whatever it is that you're going to school for if it's something related to your field or a study or if maybe you're a lifelong learner but because you're uh, um going to school for higher education now you gotta be you gotta consider being in debt which could affect you getting a house buying a car uh doing a lot of things and so this right here bringing it to this you know they have money for shots they have gift cards for shots for coronavirus shots, but they don't have money for reparations they don't have the money for the student loan debt they don't have the money for all these people they made they said they have the money for helping people stay in their homes yet the money's sitting there and it's moving slow and then you have people that are still being discriminated because they want to ask you a bunch of questions and they don't want to help you so that you won't be the next person that ends up homeless and displaced from your place of residence simply because of a situation that wasn't your fault this virus and so this situation here the people are calling for reparations for uh, the massacre in tulsa oklahoma like many reparations uh, that people of color have called for you notice it just sits there and nobody does nothing about it there's no gift cards there's no money there's no prize money no reward money and none of that and so just a week going back to this it says it's been sitting there for more than 30 years of Congress and so it says it's never taken up a full vote so a survivor of Tulsa Oklahoma 107 year old Viola Fletcher spoke in the Congress asking for justice even till this day that woman is still living living survivor I've lived through the massacre every day so she sees it as vivid as if it happened yesterday or right before her eyes so our country may forget this history but I cannot I will not and the other survivors do not forget it and our descendants do not and so you should think about that whoever's in Congress that the calls for reparation as Tulsa anniversary looms so it's that's not the only situation that has been called for reparations there's also been calls for reparations in general for people here in the u.s that are descendants of slaves and so um you see that floating around and and and, and, and they're now starting to look at it but you don't hear of gift cards you don't hear of money you don't hear of the the talk of free education for those who are in those predicaments and the you know you hear you right now you're looking at a turning point you have jobs that are open in many places of people not wanting to go back to them you know why 
it's not a shortage of workers. There's a lot of workers, but the pay is the issue or the treatment is the issue. Look at the craziness that's happening with these shootings. And you notice FedEx had it. Now you have the the uh, the VTA. Um, that they had a horrible shooting. Nine people killed. And, and you got workplace violence. People that are unhinged that are at these places of work. It's crazy. And so times are, are even so unpredictable that you could be working next to someone who could be the one that ends your life. And, and they don't even have at some of these jobs adequate protection in place to to say that you'll be safe. You're working there every day, but your your life you're expendable. Your life you're here today. You have a family and you've invested time in this place, but yet they haven't invested in their workers. And so this is what your end result is and it's horrible and so these situations are like all over the place and and so this right here I know this seems you know a little veering off but I'm going back to it it's like look you know if you don't treat people how they should be treated then you're gonna you're gonna always be reminded of what they've suffered or how it has affected whatever happens in the past i do believe affects the future and so that's why i thought 1619 was a, a good situation to try to teach youth about history and be honest about it and not hide the history because it will revisit the future and that's why you have these protests that's why you have all these uh, people that are upset and disgruntled about different things because there hasn't been honesty, there hasn't been transparency, there hasn't been closure in these situations. They've just been left open and nobody's touched them. And their way of handling it is not handling it, it's covering it up. And covering up something, what it's like covering up lies. You know, their lies upon lies upon lies and you cover it up and eventually you can't cover it anymore and so that's the way this I, I look at this but anyway having said this i'm gonna let this video go thanks for listening we'll we'll see what happens with this but this was out of Reuters, may the 27th thanks for listening